That don't mean that you don't go to work. That doesn't mean you don't do anything but sit in a, in a chair or an altar and pray all day. It's not what it's talking about. You have an attitude of prayer all day long. You're conscious, amen, you're spiritually conscious of your God. Your spirit, even while you're working, God is on your mind. Amen. When you're doing things that you enjoy, sports or pleasure, whatever, at those moments, God is on your mind. Amen. I take God everywhere I go. Yes. I take Him to the supermarket. Yes. Amen. Amen. Church is not the only place we want to meet or bring God. He's, yeah. he's, he wants to be a part of our everyday life. Yes. Wherever we go, we take the Lord. Yeah. Amen. And we be about His business. Even when we do pleasure, yeah. I always interject inject the Lord in some way, somehow. Yeah. Amen. In our travels. Whatever we do. Yes. If, if you're not there yet, something's wrong. Then you just got a weekend God. No. Mm. How big is your God? Because some people have a God that big. Some people have a God that big. My God fills the universe. Amen. And then Thank some. You, and that builds my faith. Mm -hmm. That builds my faith. I don't Amen. always get what I want when I want it. But He gives me what I need. Amen. When I need it. That's right. Amen? Amen. Because he knows what's best for me. Because even I, as much as I love the Lord, if I got everything I want, I'd probably be a spoiled brat. <laughs> Amen? Because we live in his fleshy tabernacle. Our, our, our worst yet will get self-righteous, think that we're God's pet. Look at all these people, man. They're hurting. They ain't got nothing. I got everything. Mm -hmm. King Nebuchadnezzar did that. You see what that got him, if you know the story in the Bible. Mm-hmm. Stay humble. I always tell people, especially those I disciple, you want to be successful? Stay humble. Give God all the credit, all the glory. Yes, He uses you. He uses vessels. But who, who is it? God. It's Him. Amen. It's Him using us. We're just a vessel. Broken down. Messed up as it is. Confused sometimes. Hurting sometimes. Weak sometimes. Whatever that vessel is. Different for each per people. But it's, He's willing to use it if you love Him. Amen. And surrender yourself to Him. Also in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18, praying always, it says, always, with all prayer and, there's that word again, supplication in the Spirit. See, some people pray out of their mind or they pray uh, in their flesh. Selfish, greedy, you know, or, or even pray revenge on people. Can you imagine that? Okay. That's not what he says. Pray in the spirit. The spirit always knows what to pray to God for Amen. on your behalf. Amen. So it says, praying always with all prayer, supplications in the spirit, and watching thereto with all perseverance. You got to be persistent. Amen. You got to, you don't stop, you don't quit until the answer comes. Amen. And again, it says, and Listen, supplication, listen, for all saints. Mm, for all, did you know you was a saint? Christians don't even know they're saints. I know you don't feel like a saint, neither do I, but that's what the Word calls you. The Word says, all living, not dead. When I was at other religion, I used to have a little saint on my dashboard. Yeah, he was supposed to protect me. That's why I had so many accidents. He, was, he fell asleep at the wheel. Because he wasn't a saint at all. But when you become born again, you become a saint. Some people got a saint with horns on their head. But anyhow, it's another sermon. That's why they don't feel saintish, you know what I mean? More like faintish. But anyhow, supplication for us. So that's teaching us we need to pray one for another. Amen? Lift each other up. Praise God. It's not just, say, prayer is not just about us. It's about us and others. And, and the Lord. And that should be the Lord first. We're praying to Him, giving Him praise, glory, everything we're talking about. Then we're praying for our family members, ourselves, and we pray for others. Amen. Amen. If you are living in this, and you feel weak in this life, or you feel like you're going through a dry spell or a wilderness, then you need to pay closer attention to this message today so that you can get your prayer life right, amen, or tune it up, or make some adjustments 
so that you can live in victory. Amen. Amen. Even when defeat, listen to me, even when defeat is all around you, even when you, you know, uh, see that the enemy's working overtime in your life, you still can walk in victory because you're holding on to Jesus. Amen. He is victorious. Yes. Amen? Amen. Because Amen. this too, whatever you're going through, the Bible says will pass. That's right. You speak to those things that are not as if they already were. That's faith. Yes. Amen? Get thee behind me, Satan. What's that mean? That means he's in your face. Mm -hmm. Why do you think you got to get him behind you? Because he's yes. here. Mm -hmm. Always trying to get you to, to do what's wrong. Always trying to confuse you. Always trying to tempt you. Always trying to make you doubt God's word. God's promises. God's love. All that. He's in your face. And sometimes he uses people Amen. But you got to get say get behind me. So what did Jesus say to Peter? He didn't rebuke Peter, the, the, the devil in Peter, because the devil wasn't in Peter. But he knew that the devil was messing with Peter to, to doubt God. And he said, get thee behind me, Satan. He didn't say, get thee behind me, Peter. He knew that the devil was toying with him and playing with him. Get thee behind me, Satan. Amen. You've got to know the authority you have and use it properly. Amen. Amen. <laughs> As you're praying, you don't have to live in the wilderness of weakness. Come on, That's somebody. Right. That's right. Because when you pray like this, amen, it's not, uh, you know, no matter what the devil torments your mind with, because let me tell you, he plays with everybody's mind. Don't kid yourself. From the pulpit to the pew. And that's why you've got to resist him and rebuke him on a regular basis. <laughs> so I did that last week. And that's why you're living like hell this week. Right. Come on, somebody. That's right. Living like the devil because you don't do it just once a week. Mm -hmm. You do it as often as you have to. Amen. Sometimes, one day, sometimes it's, they tag up on you. Demon after demon. A whole host of them come. Mm -hmm. That day you got to pick it up a few notches. Because mm -hmm. last week's prayer won't get it. Amen? Amen? Mm -hmm. You're in a whole new battle now. you got to pray harder. Pray stronger. Fast maybe. Whatever. To get that monkey off your back. Mm -hmm. Or that demon as we'll say. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. But, you know, like this, you see, your mind can be under attack. But at the same time, now listen, you got to get this. At the same time, your heart is untouched. Amen. The devil can't touch your heart if your heart belongs to Jesus. Amen. Amen. He can attack your mind. Mm -hmm. Okay? But that's why you're still standing, church. That's why you're still here. Because he couldn't mess with your heart because your heart belongs to Jesus. And if you give your mind the right food, amen, the Word of God and the right thinking, because the Bible says put on the mind of Christ even what you think. Whatsoever a person thinks, that's what they become. That's what they believe. That's what they live. So you have to guard your mind even what it thinks. Because fear attacks the mind. And the Bible says fear brings torment. It's a spirit. It says the spirit of torment. It's a spirit. It's a demon in disguise. You know, if the devil popped up with horns and a pitchfork and a tail and a red suit, we say, oh, get behind me, Satan. And we know that's a devil for sure. <laughs> but he don't come. He comes as an angel of light. He talks sweet stuff. You see, he'll flatter you. He'll puff you up. He'll put, try to get pride in your heart. Because he knows that will destroy you and your ministry or your love for God real quick. Or get you at least in trouble with God. Because then that leads into other roots and other things. So he doesn't come all where you can see him. And he comes and camouflages himself in disguise and through situations. Through phone calls. Through circumstances. Through the in-laws. Through the outlaws. He don't care who he uses. Come on. You just got to be wise enough to know. And if you're prayed up, you'll catch it because God will honor that. Because you're honoring Him. You won't fall into those traps. The Bible calls them snares. The devil's always got a trap for you. Always got a pit that he digs. And wants you to fall in it. I've seen them fall in them. And some of them still ain't got out. Some of them stay in the pit. Hmm. But God will say, see, remember, if you're prayed up, you hear that still small voice behind you. Don't go that way. <coughs> go this way. How many times have you ever turned and said, why did I go down this street? I was supposed to go down that street. 
Holy Spirit was maybe sparing you from an accident or drive-by shooting. God only knows these days, but you're being spared nevertheless. My wife, she gets upset sometimes because I get upset, you know. I don't get road rage anymore like I used to. <laughs> I had road rage before they named it road rage, my God. And I'd jump out of the car and start fighting with people and everything else. I told her, lock the doors. If they get me, drive. She said, I don't know how to drive. I said, push the pedal and push in the clutch and go. But I always came back. Amen. That's how crazy things were when I was living for the devil. Amen. So we want to make sure that we are tuned in to the Lord and the Holy Spirit. Praise God that we can go around the obstacles Amen. that the enemy puts in our path to trip us up. To trip us up. And the only way you can do that really is to be prayed up and read up. You got to be able to be in the Word a lot. Amen? Because uh, like you heard me say it, it's, it's not just a little cliche, it's the truth. You don't read your Bible one day, you know about it. You don't read it two days, your wife or husband knows about it. You don't read it three days, the kids know about it. You don't read it four days, everybody knows about it. Because it shows. It shows. Because there's no conviction there. There's no reminder there. When you read the Word, you, you get convicted, you get encouraged, you get blessed, you get challenged, you get oh, everything that you need comes from the Word. And the more you read it, the more it works on you, and the more, more blessed you become. Amen. The more tolerant of other people you become. Don't read it for a week and see if everybody don't get on your last nerve. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, if you were reading it every day, say, ah, well, praise God. The devil got a hold of him today. We'll just pray for him. Uh, Come, on. Right. Come on. Amen. Because some of you, I know, some of you, your spouses ain't saved. Mm -hmm. Some of you got to go home and, uh, you know, you're facing uh, the flesh. You know, and you can't let that rob your joy and your salvation. Because every one of us has to stand before God one day and give an account for ourselves. Yes. The Bible says, seek your own salvation with fear mm -hmm. and trembling. Towards the holy God. Amen. That's how we need to approach the throne on that day. Fear and trembling. Amen. We love you Lord. But we also fear you. Which we respect you. Because you have the power over life, death, heaven and hell. Amen. You see. So this ain't nothing to play with. Amen. Amen. Ooh. What's it say in Second Corinthians, Second Chronicles, rather, chapter 7 verse 14. If my people. He's talking about the church now. He's talking about Christians. Back then was in the Old Testament. Still goes for today. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and heal their land. 